Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I have a new obsession called Annie Lennox. And I just recently heard that she did a cover of one of my favorite seasonal songs, I Put a Spell on You. Really, this song for me works during any season because I am a wild magic sorceress at heart. Hmm. Regardless of season, let's get to it. I put a spell on you Because you're mine Whoa. You better stop the things you do I tell you Okay, just keep in mind, <laughs> I've, the only thing that I've dug into with Annie Lennox's voice so far is sweet dreams are made of these. I, I, I had a totally different sound of her voice in my head singing this song. And this actually is better, which is hard to believe because I love her voice in Sweet Dreams. I was like shocked and oozing with, yeah, just oozing adoration. <laughs> this has so much soul in it. I'm like, wait a second, isn't, isn't she Scottish? Like, where did that come from? There's, there's like a, a certain um, almost gritty, longing, yearning in the sound. Like, like she's got some gumbo from New Orleans going on. <laughs> what happened? I love in the cover at this beginning that we're going to go back to the beginning. I love how sparse it is left in the music, right? Uh, Screaming Jay Hawkins did this originally. I'm trying to remember if in that beginning there was a little more bass or something in there. I think that this one is left a little bit uh, lighter for longer. really light here like just on the hi-hat just like a tiny bit of sound is being left out and uh or I let in that opening grabbed me and was incredible from the get-go and it's not just the tone of the voice which it's different from your rhythmics but it's so intriguing and good for this song so far can't wait to see where it goes. But the way she lingers on spell, just a little extra, stretches it out, is fabulous. It's like this mmm on spell. It's so tasteful. And even the diction of mine, um, the way she's lingering so long on this diphthong, the I is a diphthong, right? Two vowels combined into one sound. Mine, mine. She really is going into the second part of that diphthong very heavily, which reminds me, um, ah, reminds me of that soul singing. Girls, you're mine. Mm, has a lot of intensity. You better stop the things you do. I tell you, I ain't lying. Again with this like incredible I vowel, very lying. soul on lion. You know I can't stand it. You're running around. You know better, daddy. I can't stand it because you put me down. Wow, that I'm like mind blown by so many things. I don't think I can even put my finger on all of the things that are mind blowing. This is gonna be difficult to get all of these points. We're gonna try and hit just a few. Whoa. <laughs> 
when she's going up here, she's going up in her first register still. So we would usually refer to that still as chest voice. She's belting. She's getting higher in her chest voice register without flipping over to the next register up, which we would call either head voice or mixed voice or just second register. Um, so a lot of pressure control happening in her larynx. You know I can't stand it. You're running around. You know better, daddy. I can't stand it because you put me down. Oh, I put a spell on you. It, it's amazing to hear how her phrasing is linking certain parts together and then biting certain parts off. Notice when she ends, I'll just go back to in the last 10, 15 seconds here. Notice when she ends, if she's ending loud and moving into the next section, or if she's pulling back off the mic, she's got great mic technique in this. Like you should learn from the mic technique, but it's not just the mic, it's also her self-control of the dynamics of her voice. She'll suddenly pull that sound back. like. She did it on the very end. On, I put a spell on you, and it like feels like it almost sucks the air out of you. When she's ending something loud and with lots of energy, it bridges us to the next part where she comes back in. So this is all one idea strung together. And then there are times when she has that pullback where it's meant essentially to be a, 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 its own little separate thought or to be a stop, think about it moment. And then you're running around, you know better, daddy. I can't stand it because you put me down. Oh, and then pull I, put a spell on you. I love her diction on spell. Because you're mine. Oof. Oh. Like, listen to the way she's almost like taking away our breath with how she pulls those endings back. Oh, nice live strings. Good for you. Mm, we've got a really nice uh, thickening of the bass sound in there, too. Quick mention here about the strings. Um, in modern technology, we have a lot of uh, things called samples or plugins where I could play my keyboard and the sound of an orchestra would come out. Um, you can have each note on a keyboard assigned to how a cello would play, well, within the cello's range, of course. Uh, and uh, and in such a way, a person can actually electronically create the sound of another instrument, uh, just maybe based on one instrument that they're playing. I'm using a keyboard as an example, but there are other instruments, MIDI instruments that can be used in a similar fashion. Uh, and then there's lots of programming of those samples, meaning telling those samples when to grow louder, maybe how to attack the sound or what kind of uh, ring should be happening on the sound afterwards as well. There are lots of ways to refine these samples and make them sound totally real. You would be surprised how much stuff, especially in, in TV uh, and film, that it's mostly programmed samples. There's a lot of that happening now. And, uh, and musicians have struggled with it for years because they're going like, well, I want to play something live. And it's the same kind of problem that we're seeing with AI creating whole songs now where you're like, oh, is AI going to replace even the composers, even, you know, to another degree, these musicians. I still don't think that those string samples, as amazing as they sound, they still just can't get that extra little bit of vivacity, right? There's something in them that makes them plead when it's played by a human. I, uh, and I, I've heard some amazing programming, even of like a solo violin, like, wow, drop your jaw. But for this reason, a lot of times like in video games, they'll have 
uh, mostly program samples and then a couple of solo strings that they record on top to make the whole thing sound alive. There are lots of interesting hybrid workarounds. Um, that's all to say, I love the fact that she's got a little mini orchestra here to heighten the whole sound and that they're all in the same room together because having recorded so much with my cans and a, a full set of programmed orchestra versus singing in the middle of an orchestra in a concert. When you feel the vibrations throughout your entire body, it just changes how you perform. Uh, it's magical. I love it. And one of the one of the things that I've loved most about performing live is the feeling of the whole orchestra around me or the feeling of my fellow singers' voices shaking my bones. I love that. It just, it's irreplaceable. No AI will ever be able to achieve that level. And <laughs> I think that one of the reasons this is an awesome performance so far is because of the presence of every person in that room. Okay. This is an enunciation on spell. We have to talk about it. <laughs> also, how is she white? <laughs> We're not going to bring race into it. Okay. We're not going to do that. But it just, she, her, her voice, it doesn't sound like she's Scottish to me. It sounds like I've heard so many incredible blues singers um, doing swing dancing and blues dancing throughout the years. I heard so many wonderful live singers and uh, gosh, she kind of reminds me of Kim Massey, who I heard a lot in St. Louis at one point. Oh, she, that woman could wail. Oh, enunciation. Spell. She is lingering on that S. Like it's like part of this enchantment. And then opening up that Pell in this very specific timing. We'll catch it a few times. Oops. Because you're Gotta go back. Sorry, I forgot to back there. I, put a spell on you. I love it. And I think that Screamin' Jay Hawkins played with that some too, original, right? She's so specific with it though. Oh, oh. I put a spell on you. Spell on you. Spell on you. She's actually um, delaying the beat to open it. Mm, spell spell on you. She puts a whole beat of S in there and opens Pell on the next beat. Oh, oh, I put a spell on you. Yeah, a whole beat of S. That's incredible. It's, and making sure that it opens on the next beat exactly, it's just, <sighs> I love it. Such a snazzy ending too. You, mm, I'm not gonna hold that note. And just notice here. She's so deliberate about how she's ending every single phrase and how much she's singing through her final consonants or not. So she barely closes to that in. Ma. She like touches it, I think, but doesn't actually phonate through it. So deliberate. Because you're mine. Ooh. We kind of dropped the middle out here. Oh, 
Okay, we need to go back and listen to that section again. She's going up beautifully high with so much support in her chest voice and the belting is amazing. But listen as well to the counter melody that comes in this string section. Starts right up here. You know, I love you. I and love electronic you. organ I love too. You. Electric. I love you That's such an amazing supporting energy for the voice. Wow, we still have a lot of time left in this recording and I feel like we're about to get this showdown. I wanted to stop and talk about this moment and then she just hit that spot. I'm like, ooh, I feel like it's all about to tie together. It's almost like the ending of, uh, gosh, there's a Nina Simone song that this is reminding me of. I mean, Nina Simone did do a cover if I put a spell on you. But there's another one this ending is making me think of. I'll see if I can come up with that uh, title for you in a bit. That part right there, let's just talk about that. So it sounds like she's using both a bit of a glottal reattack and reinitiating the diphthong part of that vowel there. Um, I'm Technically, that's what she's doing. But what I really get is this feeling of like, keep in it guys, keep in it, we can do more. <laughs> I love that energy. I love the way she's going down each time she does that too. More support. Wow, such good tone. Ooh, ring out of the symbol there. Let's go back a little bit and catch this ending a little more. Before we do that, I want you to just keep in mind that this, her voice is so rich, right? It's, she has such a low sitting sultry sound, but it's incredibly rich, like, it's like the richest chocolate truffle combined with wine, all of the, the delicious, scrumptious, rich stuff you can have. Her voice makes me think about food. That's a good sign. Um, incredibly rich. So when she's doing this and when she's going up higher and, uh, and landing this kind of song, her voice is a lot heavier to take up than a Tweety Bird's voice. Like, Mariah Carey's voice, right, which way up there in the rafters. She did do some belting too, but her belting would be a lot lighter than Annie Lennox's belting. This belting is heavy, and she's using this full, full mouth, full throat as well. There are tons of ways you can lighten your sound up more to make it a little easier to toss around, or you can choose to make it really heavy within reason, right? Don't don't pressure the voice too much really heavy to land a moment like this and just <laughs> make it glorious. <laughs> She's going for the full, heavy, glorious moment, by the way, in case you were wondering. Because look, look at that. Look at the space in her mouth there. And even if you like, if you yawn and feel the extra space back there, she's got so much pharyngeal space here as well. That's an amazing view down her throat. You're mine. Woo. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 So much soul in all of this.
Well, now I'm even more obsessed. What else has Annie Lennox done that I absolutely have to hear? I want you to sound off in the comments below. We do read your comments and look at what people are recommending the most. So those thumbs up on comments, by the way, those count towards recommendations. I look for those when I'm trying to plan future content. We also look in Patreon and there's a, a poll every month in Patreon. And I look at what's being at the top of those polls, not just the winners. So, you know, so those are two ways that you can influence what is going to happen on the channel next. Of course, I have my choices as well and releases from new artists that I want to support. So there's a big amalgamation. But for right now, I want you to tell me what other music featuring Annie Lennox should I listen to? Sound off in all of the places. And while you're thinking of the next recommendation, check out this playlist, a little bit of Annie Lennox in there and a little bit of some other incredible low female voices. May you fall more in love with music every day.